Genesis chapter 24 po, verse 56 ang ating babasahin. Genesis chapter 24, verse 56. Again, this is the story about uh, Abraham trying to find a wife for his son. At ang kanyang pinaghanap ay si Eliezer, yung kanyang uh, katiwala. At ang sabi po rito sa Genesis chapter 24, verse 56, here's what the Word of God said. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. Ito po ay si Eliasar. Siya po ang may sabi nito, Huwag niyo kong hadlangan. Yamang ako ay pinagpala ng Panginoon sa aking landas. Hayaan niyo kong makaalis upang ako'y makauwi sa aking master. Some things are impossible for us to see. We an example of something we cannot see. May nakakita na ba sa atin sa hangin? Sa air? Or sa wind? Wala pa, di ba? It's an example of something we cannot see. The only way that we know that wind exists is to feel it or see it working. For example, when you blow into the air, you are making a little bit of wind, but you cannot see the wind coming out of your mouth. However, kahit hindi natin nakikita yung buga ng hangin sa ating mga bibig, kaya nating patunayan yon. We can prove the wind coming out of our mouth and making a little bit of wind that can blow things maybe like paper away. Di ba? Pag uh, ikaw ay uh, humihip ng hangin, ganun, wala kang maipapakitang katibayan na nakikita. Hindi nakikita ang hangin eh. Pero, yung kayang kilusin ng hangin na ibinubuga mo, yun maipapakita mo. Kaya nga pagka humawak tayo ng papel at hinipan natin, yung papel na yun, kikilos yun. Sayang wala akong papel dito eh. Pero naintindihan nyo ako, di ba? We can prove that wind is coming out. If we put a piece of paper in front of our mouth and make a little bit of wind, it will blow away. Now, what are some other things we cannot see? Other things we cannot see, but it doesn't mean it does not exist, is love. Nakikita nyo ba ang pag-ibig? Anger. Hindi nyo rin nakikita ang anger. Ang nakikita natin, yung product ng love, yung product ng anger. Ganon din ang Diyos. Walang nakakakita sa Diyos. Pag nakita mo yan, hindi yan Diyos. Why? Because God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But it doesn't mean just because we cannot see God that there's no God. Because He is certainly real. Ang Diyos po ay totoo. At ito po ang pinatutunayan ng Genesis chapter 24. Kaya nga po, ang uh, subject natin this morning, I think I was not able to say yet, is hinder not what God prosper. Hinder not what God prosper. Huwag nating hadlangan yung pinagpala na ng Diyos. Huwag nating hadlangan yung 
pinanagana na ng Diyos. Yun po ang sabi dito sa Genesis chapter 24 verse 56. Sabi niya, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath, has prospered my way. So, certainly God is real. The Bible tells us that God created everything in the world to give proof of His power and greatness. Ang Diyos po ay makapangyarihan at napakadakila. Walang imposible sa Kanya eh. At kahit hindi siya nakikita, maraming bagay na ginagawa ang Diyos at ginawa ng Diyos para patunayan sa atin ang kanyang pagka-Diyos. He gave us something we can see to prove what we cannot see. Sabi nga po sa Romans chapter 1 verse 20, The invisible things of Him are clearly seen from the foundation of the world, being understood by the things that are made. even His eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. Kaya yeah, yung mga naisasabi dyan na, there is no God, ang declaration ng Bible, they are fools. Sa buhay po ni Elias R. pinatunayan niya, that God is real. Number one, because of the prayer that God answers. Yung panalangin na sinasagot ng Diyos. Ano ba ang pinakamagandang katibayan na totoo at tunay nga ang ating Diyos kahit di natin nakikita sumasagot siya sa panalangin God answers prayer sumasagot ang Diyos sa ating panalangin ulit-ulitin ko yan kaya nga sabi ko lagi sa programang ito ng Hope Goes On push, pray until something happens huwag tayong manghimagod manalangin huwag tayong manghinawang manalangin Huwag tayong makalimot manalangin. Pray tayo palagi. If there's one thing that we should do every day sa ating buhay is to pray. Si David sabi niya, morning and noon and at night will I pray. All great Bible characters na naging example at heroes of the faith, they all pray. Why? Because we have a prayer answering God. At ito ang pinatunayan sa buhay ni Eliezer kung paanong pinagpala siya ng Diyos, kung paanong ginabayan siya ng Diyos, kung paanong naging matagumpay siya sa mga landas niya at hindi po siya napahamak o napabayaan kasi laging may panalangin sa bibig itong si Eliezer. The servant prayed for God to help him find the one He had chosen to marry Isaac. Yung servant po na sinasabi ko ay si Eliasar. While Eliasar still prayed, he looked up to see his Rebecca, Nahor's granddaughter. When the servant asked Rebecca for a drink, she responded, just as he had prayed, God would lead the right woman to respond. Kasi yun po ang gusto mangyari ni Abraham. Ihanap ni Eliasar si Isaac na mapapangasawa dun sa kanyang homeland. And from the land of Ur or rather from Canaan, Canaan pabalik sa land of Ur nagbiyahe po si Eliasar mga 2 to 3 months. Kasi walang eroplano. Walang mabilis na kotse. Walang anumang four-wheel drive o kahit motorcycle. Camel lang. Wala rin kabayo eh. So it took him 2 to 3 months And on his journey, he was prayerful. At nung na-reach niya na yung kanyang destiny, yung land of Ur, he prayed. Nung nakita niya yung well, he stopped at the well. At sabi niya, Lord, kung sino mang babae ang magpapainom sa aking mga kamel at sa amin, ito na yung babae na ibinibigay mo para sa aking master na si Isaac. And that's what happened. Rebecca came. at nagbigay ng tubig sa kanyang mga kamel nung no, siya yung humingi. Just as he prayed, God would lead the right woman to respond. Rebecca did. After discovering Rebecca's ancestry, the servant worshiped God, thanking Him for answering His prayer. Sipin nyo, no? Of all the chances na pwedeng mangyari. Kasi ang gusto ni Abraham, 
kadugo niya kamag-anak niya eh. At yun yung natagpuan ni Eliasar. Si Rebecca, kaanak po at kamag-anak ni Abraham. Dahil ang tatay ni Rebecca at ang lolo ni Rebecca, kaanak ni Abraham. Actually, mga minamahal, kapatid ni Abraham, itong si Nahor. So, makikita natin yan sa Genesis chapter 24, verse 12 to 7. Do you notice how Abraham's servant became successful? First, he prays, revealing his expectation that God is at work. Are you listening? When you pray, it shows that you are revealing your expectation that God is at work. And God is at work, mga minamahal. Every day of our life, God is at work. Hindi po natutulog ang Diyos. Tayo minsan, hindi tayo natutulog at nagbibisi-bisihan tayo, pero wala man tayong ginagawa talaga. Pero ang Diyos, mga minamahal, He's at work. And so when you pray, you are actually availing God's working in your life. Ang paggawa ng Diyos sa inyong buhay. Ginagawa niyong available sa buhay niyo. When you pray. That's why sabi ko lagi, pray until something happens. And something will happen. Because our God is a prayer answering God. As Eliasar prays about his problem, he expects God to answer. At sana po mga kapatid, ganyan ang ating maging ugali sa pananalangin. Let's expect great things from God. Let, let's expect God will answer. Huwag na tayong manalangin kung hindi naman tayo umaasa at nagaantay na ang Diyos ay sasagot. Pag iniluhod mo at hiningi mo sa Diyos, pag ipinikit mo at idinalangin mo sa Diyos, umasa ka, ang Diyos ay sasagot. Antayin mo, ang Diyos ay sasagot. It is amazing to realize that God answered Eliasar's prayer specifically. Specifically. Kung ano yung hiningi niya, kung paanong hiningi niya, ganon ang Diyos tumugon sa kanya. The woman whom he met at the well was Rebecca, the very woman God had prepared for this narrative, for this story, for this fulfillment of God's promise. Inihanda ng Diyos yan. Pinagtagpo sila at lahat ng mga pangyayari ay ayon sa pagtugon ng Diyos sa panalangin. Not only of Eliezer, but also of Abraham. Kasi si Abraham nananalangin din eh. Alam nyo, maraming bagay na napangyayari sa buhay ng tao because we depended on a prayer answering God. This is an important story to remember as you journey through life. The Bible promises that God is ready to guide and lead us as we commit our ways to Him. Tandaan po ninyo, He could lead you in many ways and He answers definitely when we pray specifically. Totoo po, mga minamahal, He is a prayer answering God. As He promised, He will so fulfill. Kaya mga minamahal sa umagang ito, make sure you commit your way to the Lord. Always believing that He will direct your path. That He is, even supernaturally, a prayer answering God. So, not only that nakita natin the prayer that God answers, pero gusto ko makita rin natin the prosperity that God blesses. Sino sa atin ang gusto ma-prosper? Diba? Yan nga ang bati natin. So, ito yung nagpapalit ang taon eh. Diba? Happy, 
prosperous new year. Gusto natin managana. Gusto natin hindi tayo masalat sa buhay na ito. Hindi tayo kulangin sa buhay na ito. Gusto natin we have more than enough. Alam po ba ninyo ang Diyos natin? He is the God who is more than enough. Kaya nga, sabi ni Apostle Paul sa mga taga-Epeso, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. Naniniwala ba kayo sa kapangyarihan na yan ng Diyos na gumagawa para sa atin? God is able to prosper us. Now, hindi po ako nagpipreach ng prosperity gospel. Ano ba yung prosperity gospel, Pastor? E yan yung nangangaral na tanggapin mo si Jesus para yumamang ka. Tanggapin mo si Jesus para umayos, gumanda ang buhay mo. Mawala lahat ng problema mo. Gumaling lahat ng sakit mo. At tiyak yun. Ha? Tiyak yun. Pagpapalain ka ng Diyos ng uh, talagang sobra-sobrang dami ng salapi. <laughs> so, ito yung prosperity gospel mga minamahal. Yung kaya ang tao lalapit sa Diyos ay dahil in-encourage nila na yumaman. At ang Panginoon daw magpapayaman. Naniniwala po tayo, mga minaman, kayang payamanin ng Diyos ang sino man. But that's not the reason bakit ka dapat lumapit sa Diyos. That's not the reason bakit mo dapat tanggapin si Jesus. First and foremost, dapat mong tanggapin si Jesus dahil ang iyong kaluluwa without Jesus Christ ay mapapahamak at pupunta sa impyerno. Ba, ang kasalanan ay magdadala sa kanino man sa impyerno. Because the way Jesus of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is why, kailangan natin ang Diyos sa buhay natin. Sapagkat ang Diyos ang nagsugo ng kanyang anak upang ating maging tagapagligtas. At si Jesus ang kailangan natin. Hindi para lang huyumaman, kundi higit sa lahat para magkaroon ng kaligtasan ng ating kaliwala. And then of course, nais ng Panginoon kung nanaising niya, pwede na tayo ay papagyamanin niya. Dahil ang sabi naman ni Jesus Christ, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That word abundantly there means prosper. Dito po sa storya na ito, sa Genesis chapter 24, makikita natin nung marinig ni Rebecca ang kwento ni Eliasar. Rebecca ran home to tell her family what had happened. And when her brother Laban saw the gifts the servant had given Rebecca, he ran to invite the servant to stay with them. Kasi binigyan ni Eliezer si Rebecca ng mga mamahaling jewelries, ginto. San galing yun? Nagulat si Laban. For the first time in his life, nakakita siya ng ganong klase ng mga regalo. Kaya nagmamadali siya at inimbita niya itong lalaki na ito sa kanilang tahanan. And before they ate together for dinner, the servant, Eliasar told the family the story. He described Abraham's wealth. How God prospered Abraham and blessed him. This is very important, mga minamahal. You don't just want to prosper. You want God to bless your prosperity. Di ba sabi sa Bible, kapag ang prosperity, prosperity lang, delikado yan. Dahil marami ang umibig sa kasaganaan at ang kasaganaan ay nagdala ng maraming sugat at sakit sa kanilang buhay. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So let us just get this one thing straight. If it's just for prosperity's sake, huwag na lang tayong yumaman. Huwag na lang tayong magkapera. 
wag na lang tayong magkaroon ng kam, ano, limpak-limpak na salapi. Bakit? Kasi without God's blessing, lahat ng ito baliwala. Lahat ng salapi ay walang kwenta. ba? Diba? Ang gusto natin, yung nangyari kay Abraham. He prospered because God blessed him. And that's what we want to be sa ating buhay. Huwag niyong hingin ang dami ng pera sa Panginoon. Hingin natin ang pagpapala ng Diyos. At sa pagpapalang iyan, kung kasama ang kasaganaan sa buhay, praise God. Because you would not want any riches of this world without the blessing of God. Sabi nga, kapag ang Diyos ang nagpala at nagpayaman sa atin, He added no sorrow with it. Walang kasamang lumbay, walang kasamang lungkot, walang kasamang problema. Kasi sa marami, problema ang salapi. Hindi lamang pag meron. Ah, hindi lamang pag wala, kahit meron. <laughs> diba? So, Laban, And Rebecca's father, si Bethuel, realized how much God has blessed Abraham. Nakita nila talaga, totoo pala. Kasi, ang kaharap nila ay si Eliasar, isang alipin lamang. Pero, ang dami niyang dalang riches. At, ibinibigay niya ito liberally sa family nitong si Rebecca. So, nung narinig nila na si Abraham ay naghahanap ng mapapangasawa para sa kanilang para sa kanyang anak, ay nako, sige, sige, payag na kagad sila. Gusto niyong kunin si Rebecca para mapangasawa ni Isaac, sige, ipadadala namin sa inyo, bibigay namin sa inyo si Rebecca para mapangasawa ni Isaac. Alam nyo, kung merong isang napakahirap gawin sa buhay ng tao, mamanhikan eh. Alam nyo ba yung mamanhikan? Yung ihingi na yung kamay ng babae. Nung unang panahon nga, mga minamahal eh, para talaga makuha mo yung babae na mapapangasawa mo, kailangan may dowry ka. Ano yung dowry? Ah, magandang tawag lang yun sa katotohanan ay eh, parang bayad. <laughs> parang payment. Para makuha mo yung babae na gusto mo mapangasawa, papalitan mo ng malaking halaga doon sa pamilya yung kinukuha mong babae mapapangasawa. Ang tawag nga ay dowry. E dito, si Eliasar, sapat-sapat at sobra-sobra pa ang kanyang binibigay na gifts bilang kapalit ni Rebecca. At dahil nakita ng pamilya, ginto, pilak, at ang daming pera, ay ba, ay sabi nila, sige na, dalhin na si Rebecca. So, Eliezer the servant gave more gifts to Rebecca and her family. And Rebecca's family wanted her to become Isaac's wife. Pero sabi mo na nila nung aalis na si Laban, ah, si si Eliezer sabi niya kinaumagahan, aalis na po kami, babalik na kami sa ano, dadalhin namin si Rebecca. Gusto nila sana magstay pa si Rebecca for another 10 days. Pero alam nyo, Here's the thing. Iba talaga ang nagagawa ng pera eh. Maraming tao, pag may pera ka, sunod ka agad sa'yo. Pag may pera ka, sige lang kung anong gusto mo. May pera ka eh. Pero kung si Eliasar walang pera, ah, hindi siya papansinin ng pamilya nito. Pero nasilaw sila. Sabihin na natin, nasilaw sila sa dami ng dalang kayamanan ni Eliezer. So kahit gustong gusto sana nila 10 days pa bago sumama si Rebecca, hindi na sila nakapiyok. Especially, nung sinabi ni Eliezer yung ating talata, sabi niya, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. Kung ikaw yung tatay, ni Rebecca, kung ikaw yung nanay ni Rebecca, kung ikaw yung lolo ni Rebecca, here's a chance in a lifetime. 
yung anak mo, yung, lo, yung apo mo, makakapang-asawa ng isang pamilyang maayos at masagana sa pagpapala ng Diyos. Alam mong hindi kukulangin, alam mong hindi maghihirap, kundi alam mo mananagana, hindi lamang sa kayamanan, kung hindi sa pagpapala ng Diyos. Hahadlangan mo pa ba yan? Tatanggihan mo pa ba yan? Palalagpasin mo pa ba yan? Siyempre, hindi na. Kaya kahit gusto nila magstay pa ng 10 days si Rebecca with them, nung sinabi ni Eliasar, hinder me not seeing God has prospered my way. Hindi na sila nakatanggi. Alam niyo mga minamahal, kaya ang encouragement ko sa bawat isa sa atin, let us seek God's favor. Let us seek God's blessing. Let us seek God to be the one that will prosper us. Because if it is God that will prosper us, there can be no other man that can hinder us. Sabi nga, if it is God that opens the door, nobody can shut it. And if it's God that closes the door, nobody can open it. Why? Because we cannot hinder what God prosper. We cannot stop what God has allowed to go. Kaya po ang Ebanghelyo hindi kayang patigilin ng Diablo. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom God commissioned to go into all the world and preach the gospel and preach salvation in Jesus Christ. The world cannot stop it. Satan cannot hinder it because we cannot hinder what God prospered. Hindi po natin kayang hadlangan. Hindi po natin kayang pigilan. Hindi natin kayang pahintuin kung ano ang pinagpala ng Diyos. Kung ano ang pinayagan ng Diyos. Kung ano ang may pagpapala at pabor ng Diyos. Naalala ko sa Book of Acts, nung gusto nilang hadlangan yung mga apostol sa pagpapalaganap ng Ibanghelyo. Isang lalaki by the name of Gamaliel na nagsabi, huwag natin silang pigilan. Sapagkat kung yan ay hindi sa Diyos, mahihinto rin yan at mawawala. Pero kung yan ay sa Diyos, para kayong bumabangga sa pader, hindi nyo mapipigilan kung anong pinagpala ng Diyos. That is my own paraphrase in Tagalog <laughs> of that verse. Sa, sa bantala tayo, huwag basa kasi kayo para malaman nyo. <laughs> Pero ito mga minamahal, ang mensahe na gusto kong ma-embrace natin sa umagang ito. We cannot hinder what God prosper. If it is of God, you cannot stop. Kaya mga minamal, huwag niyong labanan ang gawain ng Diyos. Huwag niyong labanan ang lingkod ng Diyos. Huwag niyong pigilan ang daloy ng pagpapala ng Diyos sa inyong buhay. You want God to prosper you? Don't hinder what God has prospered. You want God to be blessing your life? Don't hinder what God is blessing. Sabi po ng Panginoon, You cannot win against the church of God. Even the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Kaya hindi ko maintindihan yung mga tao na ang lakas ng loob, kalabanin ng simbahan, No? guluhin ng simbahan. Hindi ko maintindihan yung mga taong ganyan na ang buhay nila para bang gusto nilang lustayin para kalabanin ang lingkod ng Diyos. Ang men of God na nagbigay ng buhay. Ha? Tandaan nyo ha? Ang men of God nagbigay ng buhay to be spent for the Lord. Tapos, kakalabanin nyo lang. Tapos, ipuput down nyo lang. Kala nyo, dahil parang siya ay tila baga nag-iisa. At kung titingnan nyo, parang tila baga may kahinaan siya. Oo naman. Lahat naman kaming lingkod ng Diyos, lahat naman kaming men of God. 
May kahinaan naman kami. Hindi naman kami superman. Pero ito ang tatandaan nyo. You cannot hinder what God prosper. If it is of God and you are going against it, bumabangga ka sa Diyos, you will not prosper. Kaya, ihanay po natin ang ating buhay sa lugar na ang pagpapala ng Diyos kanyang ibinibigay. Sapagkat nakita natin the prayer that God answers, nakita natin the prosperity that God blesses. At kahit na anong yaman meron ka, kahit na anong pera meron ka, at nakakala mo, dahil sa pera mo na yan, ang yabang-yabang mo, kaya mong bumangga sa Diyos, mawawala lahat sa iyo ang salapi mo. Dahil you cannot hinder what God prosper. Pangatlong makikita natin dito, and we're closing, the providential that God, or the providence that God controls. Alam niyo ba yung providence? Ito yung mga pangyayari sa ating buhay. And everything that happens sa ating buhay, whatever circumstances, whatever situation, We are out of control. Oh, wag mo sabihin, you are in control. No, no, no. Don't tell yourself that lie. You are not in control of every circumstances and situation in your life. No. None of us has control of what's going on and what's going to happen sa ating buhay. But there is one who is in control. And that is God. Sabi nga nung awit, My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that God cannot do. Meron bang hindi magagawa ang Diyos? Wala. Ikaw, meron ka bang hindi magagawa? Marami. We are not in control of our lives. No matter how want, how no matter how we want to control it, there, there's nothing that we can do. It will turn loose. It will be a mess. Kung tayo po ang magpipilit magtake control sa ating buhay. But when you put your life in the hands of God, makikita mo that God is in control. And that's what Eliezer did when he bowed down to God and prayed. When he put his dependence on God. Sabi niya, Panginoon, napakahirap nitong task na gagawin ko. Pero, with you on my side, alam ko, magtatagumpay ako. Divine guidance or intervention which God conceived as the power sustaining and guiding him human destiny. Yan ang providence eh. At nakita natin last week how it happened to Abraham sa Genesis chapter 22. Nung uh, hiningi ng Diyos si Isaac to be offered sa Diyos as a burnt sacrifice. And then suddenly, nung papatayin na ni Abraham si Isaac, sabi ng Diyos, Wag. Now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And then when Abraham looked at the other side, meron ng lamb. Yung lamb na pinagtiwalaan ni Abraham. Yung lamb na sinabi niya, God Himself will provide. And that lamb is a beautiful picture of our Lord Jesus Christ who will be our sin substitute, who will be the redemption of our soul. The lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. God providentially provided Abraham a lamb. Who would think na hindi matutuloy yung pagpatay ni Abraham kay Isaac? Abraham was determined to kill his son. 
Bakit ganun kabrutal si Abraham? Hindi. Ganun siya katiwala sa Diyos. Alam niya kung hiningi ng Diyos para kanyang patayin, alam niya God is able to resurrect Isaac. That's why wala siyang hesitation na sumunod sa Diyos because God is in control. Alam niya God can turn things around. When we say God is in control, when we say we believe in the providence of God, it means we believe that God can intervene and turn things around. Pwede po mga minamahal, He can turn darkness into light. Diba? At the beginning of creation, pinakita na kagad ng Diyos that He is in control. Everything was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. And lo and behold, there was light. Ganun po ang kayang gawin ng Diyos sa ating buhay. No matter how dark your life can be, God can just say the word and bring light sa ating buhay. Kahit na ang buhay mo ay heading down south, God can turn things around. So you will be heading up north. Ganyan po ang Diyos natin eh. He, he is a very powerful God. He always is in control of everything. Nung ang mga disciples ay takot na takot na sa bagyo habang sila ay nasa boat and they are being tossed to and fro by the furious waves and winds. There's nothing that they can't do. Wala na silang magagawa eh. Even though they are professional fishermen, takot na takot na sila. Anong gagawin natin? And lo and behold, nakita nila si Jesus Christ, chill-chill lang sa corner ng boat, natutulog lang. And they turned to Him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? At anong sabi ng Panginoon? O ye, o ye of little faith. And then, ang ating Panginoon, tumayo, tumindig, at nagwika, peace be still. Kinagalitan niya ang hangin, kinausap niya, ang dagat. Lagi ko sinasabi to when I preach this. He rebuked the wind and He spoke to the waves. Bakit? Ba't hindi ang waves ang kinagalitan at yung hangin ang kinausap? Kasi mga minamahal, yung hangin, mahangin. Yung waves galing sa malalim. So, ang lesson dito, yung mga mahangin, hindi yan kinakausap, kinagagalitan yan. Oo, tama. Mahangin eh. So, kinagalitan ng Panginoon. Kaya eh, huwag kayong mahangin, ha? Para hindi kayo kagalitan ng Panginoon. Pero yung waves, malalim, kinausap ng Panginoon. Kaya pagka tayo yung malalim, kinakausap tayo ng Panginoon. Kaya pagka tayo mahangin, kinagagalitan tayo ng Panginoon. <laughs> Pero, isang salita lang ng Panginoon, mga minamahal. And everything was calm. And everything was still. This shows to us that God is the one in control. That Jesus is God. And that He can control what's going on sa ating buhay. He can turn things to your favor. He can turn things para sa ating kabutihan. Naalala niyo si Joseph. His brother meant evil against him. Potiphar's wife meant evil against him. Everything that happens in the life of Joseph meant evil against him. Pero ang sabi ni Joseph, ang pinaniniwala ni Joseph, God meant it. For good. What may seem evil going on in your life, it can be turned for your favor, for your good, when you let God to take things in His hands. Kaya po, huwag natin kunin ang mga bagay sa ating kamay. Hayaan natin ang Diyos ang magbigay, ang magpala ang gumawa. Ito po ang na-experience ng alipin ni Abraham, si Eliezer. He saw God in control. 
At alam nyo ang pinaka-importante rito, bakit iningatan ng Diyos itong ginagawa na ito ni Eliasar? Kasi yung mapapang-asawa ni Isaac, dito po manggagaling ang seed. Dito dadaloy yung blessing sa seed. The seed which God promised that would be a blessing to all the world, to all the world, is none other but Jesus Christ. Kaya hindi pwedeng magkamali ng mapipiling mapapangasawa sa pagkat out of this marriage would come out Jacob. And out of Jacob would come out the twelve tribes. And out of the twelve tribes would come up, would come out the seed of the woman. which will become our Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya po, talagang God orchestrated everything so that Rebecca would become the wife of Isaac. Magtiwala po tayo sa Diyos. He is in control. God here sovereignly preserves the seed through which will come the Savior, the serpent crusher. He has the power to intervene, to provide, to save, to arrange circumstances, or use every situation to our favor, for our good, according as His pleasure can provide. Tandaan po ninyo, ang ating Diyos does things according to His pleasure, according to His will. So let us seek the Lord's guidance as we carry out our life's task. Our decision need to be made with careful thought, and most importantly, with God's providential care that we will trust. Casting all your cares upon Him, sabi ni Apostle Peter, for He cares for you. We especially need God's guidance in everything we do. Let's get God involved sa ating buhay. This is Pastor Jess Marasigan, and once again, share this live video. Thank you for listening and watching. Be a sharer. If you have been blessed, share this, lalong-lalo na sa ating YouTube. You see, others may need Jesus Christ. Others may be looking for the answer sa life's question. Where will I go when I die? And this video can help. Dahil sa bawat video natin, sinisigurado natin, narinig ng sino man na makikinig that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to God without Him. If you are not yet sure that when you die today, you will go to heaven, you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Si Jesus Christ po ang tanging daan para sa ating kaligtasan. He's the one who died on the cross. He's the one who shed His blood. And that death of Christ on the cross is the payment for our sin. At yan ay pinatunayan when He resurrected from the grave. Because that shows the payment was accepted. Anybody who will put their trust in Christ will be saved. That's what the Bible says. So, sana mga minama, napagpala kayo. And let's be a blessing to others also. Let us pray. Panginoon, salamat po sa pagkakataon na ito na kami po ay muli nakakapakinig ng iyong salita. At kami po, Panginoon, sa umagang ito ay humihingi ng iyong pagpapala sa aming buhay, sa pagsagot sa aming panalangin, na ikaw po, Panginoon Diyos, ang mag-take control sa aming buhay. And Lord, we ask that you will bless, we ask that you will heal those we are praying for, Bless our brethren sa Sydney, Australia, sa Singapore, sa Vietnam, sa Chile, sa Japan, sa London, sa lahat na kung saan may hopers, Panginoon. Especially dito sa Pilipinas. Bless us. Help us. Guide us. Salamat po sa iyo. This we pray. In the most precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless each one po. At sana po tayo po ay uh, mapalakas sa ating pananampalataya sa Diyos. Standing.